Good morning, welcome. Today's topic is on predestination. Predestination. The lesson is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 14. Is it Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 14? Let me read. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, which with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will, according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of our your salvation and belief in Him will seal with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are some common questions about predestination. Did God choose us first or we chose God? Did God chose us or we chose God? Who chose who? Can we choose God and then decided to abandon Him? Is there such a thing as once saved and always <coughs> saved? <coughs> These are the questions the Christian Church had over the years, especially after the Reformation, the churches have been debating and arguing and thesis over thesis, PhD over PhD, uh, discussion on topic like this. Uh, well, today I'm not trying to answer any of this the way the church has uh, tried to uh, answer. But this, I will, I will look at this passage and see what the passage of the Bible says to us. Of course, different passage tends to tell you different story, but then if we look at the whole Bible completely, you will see uh, a general picture. And, but the, that is this general picture which many people uh, debate upon. And some say it, it is this way, some it is it that way. This is as complicated as baptism. You know, the people who are arguing over whether you should baptize uh, completely, fully immersed, or sprinkling, or you uh, baptize first and then believe later, or believe first and baptize later, and whether your baptism is valid or not, that's the uh, uh, the same similar type of things they are arguing over. But today we are not looking at this. We are trying to see what the scripture tells us. According to Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, in Ephesians. Here, uh, chapter 1, Paul is very clear uh, when he wrote to the Ephesian church. He says this, and to Paul, there are many times that you look at it, it is, he says, God chose us. God chose us. So, verse 4 says, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before Him. So he says, before the foundation of the world, God has chosen us. In verse 5 he says, in love He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons, through Jesus Christ. 
and he predestined us. In verse 11, And in him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So when we look at Paul in this passage, it is quite clear Paul says God chose us. He chose us and predestined us. So when you look at it, before the foundation of the world, He chose us. He chose us for adoption to Himself as sons and He chose us to give us a purpose according to His will. That's Paul's idea. Then you say, why did He choose us? You know, God chose us for a specific purpose. So he says, He chose us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless. So he, he chose us so that we can be clean and holy. And this is, you know, in, in the sense that Paul is actually saying that in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve fell into sin, it was not holy and, and, and not clean anymore, they were cast out. So after that, God began to choose us and try to, or the purpose is to make us holy and blameless. Remember this, holy and blameless. In verse 5, he said he predestined us to be his son through Jesus Christ, according to his, the purpose of his will. When we were in the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve, and after they fell, they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and they are considered dead. In the Hebrew word, dead means they are out of the presence of God. So they are no longer children of God. So now God is predestining us to be His children, His sons, through Jesus Christ, only through Jesus Christ. Be predestined. This is His will. And number verse 7, He says, Because of Jesus Christ, we have redemption through His blood and forgiveness. It was through Jesus Christ that redemption and the forgiveness of our sins. Then verse 11, He says, We will have an inheritance because this inheritance, if we stay in Jesus, we will predestine this inheritance for us because it was according to His will, that is His purpose, so that verse 12, when we were first to hope in Christ and then we will be sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. So when you see this is a specific purpose, and I reiterate again, so when we were out of the Garden of Eden, we were no one, we were far away from God, and God's presence is not with us, so we are groping in the dark. God said, He chose us. Long, long time. First, He chose us to be His children in the garden, but when we fell out, then He still chose us so that we can be holy, blameless, and we return one day. So in order to return, He already predestined these people who return are the sons, only the sons. But it has to be through Jesus Christ. And then you have redemption, then you have forgiveness, then you have inheritance, then you have hope, then you have the Holy Spirit working in you. So when you look at Paul, it is quite clear that God chose us for this special purpose. Now the question is, what about our faith in God? Why do we still ask us to believe that you accept Jesus Christ? Verse 13 tells us, In Him you also, when you heard of the word of truth, and you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believe in Him, then you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. Then, then what about this belief? He says, after hearing the gospel, then we believe and God's Holy Spirit come and God's truth come and God's salvation come. 
So we have the truth, we have the salvation, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the inheritance, all that. So when which part did our faith come to say? Uh, so it is the faith, you know, people talking about predestination. Faith is we believe Him, we choose Him. Predestination is God choose us. So I'd like to share with you a, a general story of a person, a life story of a person. Before we were born, our parents chose us in that sense, chose us before their marriage. They wanted to have children. So finally we come. So in the sense that we were chosen by our parents. So when we chose us and then we became their children and so the parents taught us the gift of decision making and freedom. It taught us how to make decision and how to become free. So then our parents show us the way to be good and responsible person. Help us to be good and responsible person. So they teach us the manners, the law, the the, mat, the life, and how we can conduct ourselves. Then the, our parents is like. It's almost like predestined us to grow up and to be parents ourselves and to have our own family. So it is the parents predestined us, chose us before the marriage and after the marriage we, we, have, we are born, it, they taught us to make the right decision and taught us to be good and responsible people following their ways and then they plan and they plan everything those days they match make even today we allow us to be a bit, bit of our own choice and so finally you get married and then become parents and have the own family then you go on your own then you plan your own family so when we look at these things, it's almost like our parents have chosen us or predestined us. But of course, number one, when they got married, they predestined us to be born, so that one we can take part. Secondly, when they taught us how to make decisions, to, to make good decisions or wrong decisions, we, that one we come in. We take a share of it. We want to or we don't want to. We take a share. So sometimes we cannot blame the parents. Parents want to teach us a lot of things, but sometimes we rebel. The third thing, God, the parents want to show us the way to be good and responsible person, and sometimes we went other ways. So we end up not good and not responsible. Then, Fourthly, then the parents want us to grow up, to be parents, to have our family. And some choose not to, and some not decided that is the better way is not to go this journey. So where did you say our choice come in? So the choice didn't come in the first part, when before you were born, they came in after you were born, then you have a choice. So in the same sense, obviously our own choice is to believe, uh, to believe, to follow or not to follow. It was a later choice. So when we have come out and to be born, then we are taught, then we decide yes or no. Obviously God's choice precedes our choice. So God first chose us before we choose Him. So when God chose us and chose Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world, He chose us, present Jesus to die on the cross, give us redemption, give us salvation, give us everything, then we decide to come in. So it is not so much that our life of our salvation depends on our choosing, our faith. That one comes later. 
whether in the end of the day, whether you enter into university, whether you pass or fail, you decide. You decide. So in the end of the day, how whether we go to heaven or not, we decide. But the choice and the chance and the privilege was given us because God sent Jesus. And He had done everything for us. So much so that we, later on, when we have the choice, we say, we decide and we want to have salvation or not. We want to follow God or not. So, yes, that is the second part. So God's choice precedes our choice. So when we want to put these two together, then of course uh, that is not right. Because prior to it, everything is uh, done. Bef before we can do anything, everything is done by God. Only later on, when you are given the privilege, the life, the decision, then you decide. So your decision is more later on whether we want to accept the good and responsible life, you want to accept to right decision, whether accept to continue to follow God's way, to propagate and to have family. Then we decide. That is not. God's decision, we decide. But the beginning part, God's decision was before we knew Him, He chose us. He chose us to have parents and then we were born, given us life. And then Jesus came and died on the cross for us. So we have to go and believe and receive Him. Then only salvation and redemption will come. Then you say, what about those people who didn't want to believe? didn't hear. Well, that's why everybody needs to hear the gospel. For those who have not heard the gospel, God will provide other means. Just before Moses, before Abraham, people have other means. They have their conscience, they have the creation, and they have their own sense of right or wrong. So that was their the decision for us who have after Jesus, the decision is through Jesus. If you have not heard, you probably will need, they will judge you by some different level. So, we, in the end of the day, the decision is still Jesus and make it available, chose us, bring us out, then you want to believe or not. Then how shall our response be? First, we must understand this before we make our responses. God has no evil intention at all for us. He has no evil intention. Everything that comes from God is good, is perfect, is wonderful, is beautiful, is holy. No intention to harm us. God is not here to make something and you know, put a, a watermelon skin for us to step on it and we fell and then he, he kept and said, ah, ha, 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 look how stupid this guy is. No, God will not do that. This is not his intention. Whatever harm that comes, it is part of the world. The cause of the world is created, is dominated by all the evil things in the world. And God will still make do, will come and make do and help and build up. You know, God will make do and come and build up. Uh, us and so that we will be blessed by him. Very strangely, even though there is, he has no intention for harm, but the evil one has intention for harm, but God is trying to help us to overcome. And then from there, we will recover and we learn again. He will not ignore us or cast us away. He will not forsake us. He will not forsake us. So that is God. He. So if we forsake Him, He may not. He will not forsake us. He's like the prodigal father. He will look at the son waiting for the son to come. The son may want to go away. This one want, want to take his money and spend all over. But he's waiting for that day the son will come back. So God is still waiting for all of us to come back. Unfortunately, some don't. And God is good and holy. God always protect and watch 
over. God always provide and care for us. So He is there all the time. Even though when we don't pray, He will also provide and care, protect and watch over. But we thought that we must care, we must pray. Yes, if you pray, that means you are more focused on it. You don't pray, God knew everything. The, when the Israelites in Egypt did not pray to God, don't know God, don't know who is who is He, and God heard their cries. They are crying out of suffering. And many of the Israelites during the days of Judges, you know, they were controlled by other people, by other groups, and, they, and when they cried to God, God hear them. And even they didn't cry, God also hear them. Because God has His own way. Many of us, no one cry to God. We don't know God. We don't know Him at all. And God knew our situation. He sent missionaries to come. He sent preachers to come. He sent evangelists to come. So today, how shall we respond? Respond is God's choice is always better than our choice. So I would rather let God choose and He predestined, we follow. So if we say, oh, we have a choice to make, yes, why don't you make the choice that follows Him? Rather than you make a choice that walk away. Yes, you have a choice, but your choice is still following the same journey. It's a person given a, taken into a school, you know, you, you, you know, you can study or you don't study. If you want to study, the choice is to follow and then you know that you will progress. If you don't study, one day you get up. You are given a privilege. Today we have the privilege. Jesus has died for us. Be that is a privilege given to us. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we all argue over predestination. Yes, God has predestined each one of us to come back to Him. He pressed destined Jesus to come and die for us, give us redemption, salvation, and inheritance. Yes, He predestined all these things for us. When we are, are in the position to respond and believe, Lord, help us to believe and follow Him. Rather to believe and walk a different way. Because only walking His way, because He is good, He is holy, he is perfect, he is wonderful. And he protects and he cares, he watches over, he provides. Thank you, Lord. He will not harm us, he will not have evil intention, he will not cast us away. Help us, Lord. We pray that we follow him and choose him. Now. Amen. Thank you.